Hi there, I'm Eddie O'Donnell here at Tools for Working Wood, and today we're going to be working with Osmo again. I'm showing you how to use the Osmo Top Oil. Now in our last video, we talked about the Osmo Pollux, and there's sort of three big finishes that Osmo has. The Pollux, the Top Oil, the Wood Wax Finish. The top Oil is essentially their food grade finish. Uh, it's a thinner version of the Pollux that has the testing done for that food grade rating, so that way we know it's safe uh, to use on cutting boards and other food surfaces. And today we'll be finishing this mahogany and maple cutting board. This is actually one that's been in my house for a little while. Uh, I never finished it when I finished making it. Um, so it's got a bunch of knife marks and stuff in it, but I quickly gave it uh, a light sanding. And uh, we're gonna throw this on because I think it'd make a nice finish for this. Uh, so we've got our cutting board and the top oil. And we're going to go over a few different ways to apply it. I'm going to do three coats of the top oil on this cutting board. And the first way is just going to uh, be probably the simplest way that we're going to apply any of the Osmo products. Then we'll go over a couple of ways that are a bit more unique. The top oil, just like all the other Osmo products, should be shaken or mixed really well. All right, a nice sort of rag tool. Got our cup of top oil here. And the key, as it always has been with all Osmo products, and with a lot of finishing in general, is multiple light coats. Seem to be the way that I've always found success. So we're not gonna soak in too much in, in here. All right. And we're gonna just sort of dig this in little circles, or you can do figure eights, you know whatever your heart desires. I'm gonna go hang this rag up to dry. We're going to give it about 15 minutes, let it begin to tack up, soak in, and then we're going to wipe away the excess. All right, so we've given this about 15 minutes to dry, so now we're going to take a look at it and see if we have to wipe off any excess. I'm just going to give the whole thing a quick wipe down. All right, now we're back to apply our second coat. I've given this guy 8 to 10 hours to dry out, so he's ready for another coat. And the application method that we're going to use for this is going to be kind of a, a mixture of things that we did in the Osmo Pollux video. It's kind of a unique application method for this. We're going to take our white pad, uh, the Norton Beartex pads. We're going to take our Rotex sander. In this particular case, it's the Rotex 90. And we're going to, with the pad directly on the sander, we're just going to pour a little bit of finish on here, and we're going to buff and apply the finish sort of all at once. All right, so our application here is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to take a little bit of our Osmo. I've got just a little bit here that I shook up and poured out. We're just going to pour a little bit on. We really don't want that much. Again, thin coats is the winning recipe here. We're going to make sure our Rotex is set to rotary mode here on the lowest speed setting that we can. Turn it on. And this is a pretty simple operation. You're just going to pick up that Osmo with the Rotex and just go ahead and do the grid. You know, hit every spot pretty evenly on here. All right, that's pretty good. The surface doesn't look terribly glossy. Um, looks like we buffed in a lot of that finish, not too wet on top, which is kind of what we're looking for. All right, so we're gonna get this tacked up, give it about five, 10 minutes now, and then I'll quickly come back and really buff this finish in with a fresh white pad. All right, I've got my fresh white pad here. Gonna throw that on the sander, and we're just gonna quickly Buff this guy in again. A 
And what we're looking for here is pretty similar to last time. We want to pick up any wet spots. We want to get things looking consistent. All right, and that's it. There really wasn't that much on the surface to take off. Uh, in fact, you can see on the pad here, it still looks pretty clean. I'm gonna leave this for another eight to 10 hours. And then after that, I'll show you guys another method to apply. All right, so we're back here to do the third coat. Now, one thing you may have noticed, I'm not sanding between coats. Osmo doesn't recommend that you sand, although in general, my preference is to sand between coats. In this particular case, our application's pretty thin, so I don't really feel the need. Now, this application is gonna go on with Osmo's brush. All it is is a black bristle brush, kind of a high quality standard paintbrush, if you will. So for applying this finish with the brush, it's gonna be a little bit different from your average brush application. All right, so we're gonna take our Osmo brush to take a little bit of finish and we're just gonna wick just a little bit in there. That looks good. All right, so now we're gonna begin to apply our finish. The bristles on this particular brush are relatively stiff and thick, so a slightly more aggressive touch may be needed to lay down a nice even coat. You don't wanna go too heavy, but you can't go too light because of the stiffness of the brush. So now that we have a nice even coat on there, I'm gonna give this brush a cleaning with the Osmo brush cleaner and thinner, and then we'll come back and brush away the excess in a few minutes. And now we're ready to brush away any of the excess. Now we're gonna use the brush in the direction of the grain to remove all of that. And we're gonna do that until the surface looks like it has a nice even coat and we see no spots with any excess. It wants to look relatively consistent on the entire piece. All right. That looks like a nice, even surface we have there. We're gonna leave it at that and let this finish cure. All right, so that's our last coat of Osmo done. It's nice and dry. I'm really happy with the way it came out. Nice satin finish. There's a matte version also, if you're into that, if you don't want something that's shiny. Now I ended up going with three coats of Osmo on this, mostly to show off the three different application methods. But it's also a cutting board. It's gonna get a lot of use and abuse. I don't mind that little extra coat of protection there because it's gonna get so much uh, aggravated assault, so to speak, in the kitchen. That being said, the recommended amount of coats for the top oil tends to be two coats, uh, and I can feel the difference here. It definitely feels like a more built up uh, finish than if I had only done two coats. So that's left up to you. You can always do more coats than is recommended, but two coats is definitely all you really need. I also probably wouldn't vary the methods of application between my coats. That being said, I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out. So there is a certain amount of foolproofness to this finish. It's kind of idiot proof, which works pretty well for me. Now if I'm going to recommend one of the three ways to apply, it would definitely be the first one, where you wipe on with a rag and wipe off with a rag. Of the three different methods, it's the least fussy. It's the one that most people are going to be familiar with at the end of the day. A lot of different oil products have that type of application method, the wipe on, wait a little bit, and then wipe off. So I think it's the one that people are going to get along with the easiest. I'll also say that there is no giant leap in quality between all three versions of applying the finish that I've noticed. At least with the brushing, I think that one's probably the most fussy of all three of them. And I would say wiping on and wiping off with the rag because it's the easiest, because it's giving you good results. I think that's the way to go. I'll also say it was a huge pleasure working with this pro product, mostly because it's a super low VOC product. I'm always worried about my health and my lungs, and you guys should be too. This is a product that has a small smell to it. That being said, dissipates relatively quickly. And I know that when I'm working in a small space like this, I'm not harming myself, I'm not harming anyone else who's sharing the space with me. And one more thing I'll always mention in an Osmo video, please leave your rags to dry before you throw them out. Because of the oil-based nature of Osmo, 
there is the chance for spontaneous combustion. Uh, so please leave your rags out to dry, preferably on a non-flammable surface. When they get crusty, then you can throw them out. Thank you everyone. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys at the next one.